Hey, welcome back everyone with your update on Tropical Storm Ian. So if you start with the big picture so you can see where you are in reference to the entire tropical Atlantic, Ian is here just southwest of Jamaica and just south of the western tip of Cuba. You can also see Florida coming into the picture here and we're going to zoom in a bit more so you can see. Now what are we looking at in this particular image is you can start to see the, these what we call banding features meaning you can see like the, the structure looking more like bands. That is a sign that Ian is commencing the intensification or the organization process that we've been talking about over the last couple of days. And we do anticipate that Ian, especially later today and tonight, will commence the intensification process and become a hurricane. Now, this is probably what everybody's tuning in for is the latest update on the track. And we're gonna spend a second here because there's a lot to really unpack. First and foremost, those in the immediate path of the storm, uh, the red areas, hurricane warning, which means hurricane conditions expected, blue area, tropical storm warning, tropical storm conditions expected. So you can see that Ian's gonna turn gradually towards the north as it intensifies into a hurricane, move over or very near the western tip of Cuba where it may be a very strong hurricane. Then emerging into the eastern Gulf of Mexico at days three and four, and then begin approaching the Florida Peninsula uh, about midweek. If you see here this little bitty orange area, it may even be hard to see. That's the current size of the wind field. Now one of the things I have to stress is that as Ian moves into the Gulf of Mexico, that is going to expand considerably. The wind field is going to expand as Ian intensifies. So you can't be too fixated on this cone and it moving around a little bit. I'm seeing a lot of that. Oh, it moved this way, it moved that way. Ian is gonna be a large and powerful hurricane in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and spread its impacts over a large portion of the Florida Peninsula. So don't get too fixated on in and out of the line moving around too much. Notice here it says M, that is major hurricane, or category three or higher. So Ian could be, again, a very powerful hurricane as it moves into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. The, the other thing that's gonna be a little bit disorienting for you, especially as we move in tonight, is, and I'll go back to the image, the satellite image. This is not an overly impressive satellite image. And we've seen time and time again that people base their risk on the current, how it looks currently, and this isn't all that impressive, especially relative to how a well-defined hurricane might look. That will be a mistake, because what's gonna happen as this thing intensifies over the Northwest Caribbean and moves into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico is its satellite appearance is gonna be really, really impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and warn you that as you see this unfold, it may actually be a little unsettling as that satellite really builds out. A lot of people are gonna to run to the stores when they see that. So I stress that you use the rest of today to finalize your preparation while it's calm. Because tomorrow, when we look back at this satellite image, it could be very impressive, and a lot of people are gonna to run to the stores, could be long lines, and really complicate that final step of preparedness. Now, in terms of impacts from wind, I talked about how the wind field is gonna expand and get bigger. I think this graphic is a better indication of where damaging winds, da the potential for damaging winds could go. So anywhere colored here has the potential for damaging winds, but the brighter color indicates the highest probability of damaging winds. And you can see just how much of the Florida Peninsula is painted by this graphic. So if you're in one of these colored areas, um, prepare for potential for damaging winds and, and you know, down power lines, limbs, that sort of thing. Now you can see here southeast Florida, so this is Miami-Dade, Fort Lauderdale, and the extreme upper keys, um, the track has shifted just enough that you're now out of the damaging wind potential, but I still need you to prepare for he potential heavy rainfall and, and gusty winds and some of these outer squalls. And you can now, if we look at the timing, look at the timing, so this is when you wanna be ready we don't have everything done. The storm has slowed down a little bit, so we got a little bit of time, slowed down a little bit. You can see that uh, wind conditions or, or ha onset or hazardous conditions in the lower keys 
by Tuesday sunset. So you know by Tuesday midday you got to be done. And then by central, central Florida, Wednesday. So you got to be, you know, wrapped up based off things going downhill at this timeline. So if you can see this, so you in Tampa, conditions would go downhill during the day on Wednesday. So be done by then accordingly. We talked about this a second ago. This is the excessive rainfall outlook. So even though southeast Florida is out of the wind impacts, and this is why you can't focus on the cone, right? It's, it's a lot of nuance here in the impact. So even though southeast Florida is not in the impactful winds, it could be heavy, heavy, heavy rain potential. And we're at the end of the wet season, right? We're at the end of the wet season. So flooding potential is there. Now, I want to end here with probably the most important component of this briefing. The surge vulnerability along the west coast of Florida is very extreme, perhaps some of the highest vulnerability in the country. And a lot of people are going to look at the track that is offshore, like you here in Tampa, you're probably looking at this track, it's offshore, I don't have to worry about it. Cape Coral, Naples, Fort Myers, I don't have to worry about it, it's offshore. I'm telling you, it doesn't take an onshore or direct hit from a hurricane to pile up the water. And we could see significant surge along the west coast of Florida, even if the center stays just offshore of these areas. This is why I need you to find out if you're in an evacuation zone. Now, to be clear, no evacuations have been ordered. But I need you to know if you're in an evacuation zone, and more specifically, which zone you're in, in case an evacuation is order is necessary. The way you do that is floridisaster.org. Know your zone. You can pause the video and go back and look at this website. And then up here in the upper left-hand corner, you can type in your address and find out which zone you're in. They're generally labeled A, B, C, and D. So find out what letter, what letter you are. And if you are watching us from outside of Florida and you have family members in here, call them up and ask them, what's your letter? Because this is going to be really, really important tomorrow. If evacuations are ordered, they'll be ordered by letters. And I want you to know whether or not that includes you. Now, another important thing to talk about is if you're not ordered to evacuate, if you're not ordered to evacuate, it may be safer for you to actually stay put. So make sure you're listening to local emergency managers when they start making these evacuation designations so that you know what to do and can do so calmly and orderly. That's it for the National Hurricane Center. We'll be right back with you tomorrow at the exact same time, the exact same channel.